Now today we're going to focus specifically on the table saw and it's not going to be that sort of comprehensive thorough review. It's going to be the type of thing that I teach my students every time they come to my shop for the first time. It's something that you have to review and it's not so much a do this, don't do this type of conversation. It's trying to convey the feelings, what to look for and uh, little tips and tricks that you might not necessarily get until you have a few years of experience under your belt. So it's really valuable for us to talk about these things. Just very briefly, some of the common safety items for the table saw. You've got your push sticks. So a lot of, uh, a lot of people don't like these metal push sticks, but I do keep this one on hand in case I have some really thin, you can see how thin that is. I've got some really thin pieces that I need to be very carefully uh, slid by the blade. It's just, I don't know, I don't use it that often. The plastic one is nice because if the blade hits it, it's just gonna chew up the plastic and it's not gonna shoot metal back in your face. Okay, feather boards. By far, my favorite feather boards now are these mag switch ones that have the little turn magnets in there. These are great, fantastic little tools. And this one is their new universal one. So you can use it in multiple uh, directions and from either side. These little things are called board buddies. And these are great for holding work pieces down. And you'll see why that's really critical in a moment. And um, that's about it for just some of the basic stuff that you're gonna come across. I think one of the most important things, and, and this can't be stressed enough, is the use of a splitter. Okay, now I don't have a blade guard on my table saw, and that's a personal choice that I made because my guard was actually getting in the way, and I, I found myself feeling less confident about my cuts, so I removed it, and that's a personal choice. But I don't think a splitter is optional. I think a splitter is a must-have for every woodworker, and use it every time you can. Some cuts you can't, but you know that's why riving knives are becoming more and more popular because you can use them in more circumstances. So uh, that's it for the basic um, tools that you should have on hand. And of course, zero clearance inserts are great, less chance of things falling through, catching the blade and shooting back up at you. Uh, and I like having a red one because the red one says, don't put your hands anywhere near here. It's sort of a warning zone for you. Now one of the scariest things that can happen to you on a table saw is a kickback. And once you've had one, you're never gonna forget it. And God forbid you have two or three, uh, it becomes harder and harder to forget. Um, a lot of people get really gun shy after they have them and for good reason, it really scares the crap out of you. But there are things that you can do that sort of prevent these things from happening. Okay, first of all, knowing the physics of this situation um, can kind of help prevent that from occurring. First of all, when you're approaching the table saw, you don't want to stand in the path of uh, you know, the line of fire. If something were to kick back, it's going to kick back in this area. Now standing over here is certainly an option, but it's not a real good one because we're not able to put our natural body pressure, our direction is this way. That's not the way we want to force this piece of wood. We want to force it into the fence. So it actually makes a lot more sense for us to stand on this side. So now, when we push, we're gonna push forward and we're gonna push into the fence and that's exactly what we want. Okay, there's, a, there's actually a third direction where we need pressure and that's down. Okay, so these little subtle details are things that you'll learn over time but it's very helpful if someone reminds you right at the beginning, there are three directions you need to push. So as you're pushing material through, one of the most common mistakes I see people make is as they're pushing the material through, let me lower the blade so I can get it by, they don't have enough pressure up toward the front. So sometimes they just try to push from back here. And what's gonna happen? Well, the natural forces that are acting on that piece of wood are gonna actually, before it hits the splitter, it's gonna lift it up. And it scares the crap out of me. I mean, for, for a teacher, there's nothing scarier than standing over here watching a student push things through and it starts to lift up. And you have to decide how are you gonna respond so they don't hurt themselves, but you don't actually get, an, you know, you don't want to get too involved because you can make the situation worse. So you cover these things ahead of time. You want to make sure that they're always putting as much pressure as they can uh, toward the front of this workpiece without getting their hand too close. Now, you can use things like this, which do that for you. It's spring-loaded, and it actually puts downward pressure. So now all you have to do is worry about pushing up against the fence and pushing forward. But we can even do one better. You can add a feather board. The feather board pushes in the second direction, which is now up against the fence. So with these two items in place, all you need to do is push forward. You don't want to completely remove your thought process from these other two directions as well. Um, you, you don't want to absolutely count on them, but it helps you keep that uh, direction under control. So with those safety items in place, you sort of minimize the things that you really, really need to worry about. 
But if you do handle this cut freehand, the motion that I usually like to use, down into the fence and forward, and I keep my fingers away from the blade, but you gotta be aware that this will lift and come back in your face as you push it through. Now, there are times that I've seen students come through and they push it to a certain point. And I guess this is something, again, that comes with enough experience with what they call, um, you know, sort of reaction wood, that as you cut it, the forces that were into that wood were released and it starts to pinch the blade. So you'll see people as they go through and they start, they catch it, and their natural reaction is to continue pushing through, to get through that heavy point. And that is usually the one or two second uh, moment in time that you have to prevent kickback. If you continue to push through that, especially if you don't have a, a, a splitter, you're almost guaranteed at that point to have a kickback, but the splitter usually helps prevent that. As you're pushing through, if you start to feel that catch, usually the best thing to do is to stop. I actually will stop the machine, and this, um, if you want to bring the camera around so you could see the kick switch. Now if I feel an immense amount of pressure as I'm pushing this through, I am not going to keep forcing it. I'm going to make sure I hold my hands here and hold it so it's stable, it doesn't move forward, I'm not pulling it back, I'm just holding it in position, and then this is a good reason to have one of these. I kick the kick switch with my knee and that shuts the saw off. I don't ever have to remove my hands from the workpiece. I just kick this and it turns off. That has probably saved me from a number of kickbacks in the past, or at least maybe the splitter would have stopped it, but I don't want to take that chance. So a kick switch is a very good table saw upgrade. And a lot of them now uh, seem to come with very large stop buttons, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. You may not even have to make one of these, but mine is a very simple hinged board um, with a hole in it so that I could reach the on button and a little screw in the back and that screw is what hits the off button, okay? So it almost seems like it's spring-loaded, but it just bounces naturally. 